Okay, then I'll get started. Um, so uh, I'm presenting this session because uh, Prashant was blocked by Samsung from presenting um, for some reason. Uh, and the slides are just a quickly hacked together set from this morning uh, with, with a bit of content. So it'll be a pretty short formal presentation and then uh, a Q&A session for anything people want to know. Uh, we've, we've got all the major contributors on the call, I, on the meeting, I presume, I think. And so uh, you can get firsthand information about what's going on. OK, so, uh, so current dark mode availability in Chrome. Um, we've got two main pathways. One is the CSS prefers color scheme uh, media, uh, media setting. Um, this requires, uh, or this allows, essentially, uh, content authors, developers, to specify a, a parallel set of properties for when the browser is in dark mode. Um, and we will display the, the dark mode. Uh, we will use the dark mode styling uh, when, when Chrome's in dark mode. Um, downside is uh, you need to devise, devise all the styles explicitly. So basically, I, you pretty much need an all or one method uh, for all of your content to avoid having uh, a messy mixed up content. Um, and so if you've got a, a large web ecosystem that you're uh, in charge of, then that's a lot of work. Um, the other alternative is a forced dark mode, which is a um, flag available in Chrome. Um, and you can support in Chromium, anyone can access this. This is uh, available through command line flags uh, or feature settings that can be set by any embedder. Um, and this enables dark mode without any modification at all. Um, we'll do our best to, to make the page dark independent of, of the content of the page. Um, of course, this is uh, you know, a potentially insolvable problem to do the best case, but, but we do our best. Um, but there are some cases that definitely do not work well right now. Um, and there's no spec for this. It's pretty much a best effort on, on our part. Um, so that's where we're currently at. Um, the way that you access this and, and sort of the, as far as where where you get what features. Um, web, web, view, web view supports uh, both methodologies. And in fact, WebView has uh, uh, three different settings, um, which is, in fact, more than Chrome support. So supporting WebView for dark mode is actually better because uh, I guess apps demanded it more well, and, and we are delivering. Um, Chrome browser supports prefers color scheme by default. And uh, you can enable the forced dark mode if you wish. Um, with a bunch of options. The little image on the right there um, shows the various options to control how we um, manage images mostly. Um, and on Chrome OS, we support the forced, uh, per support the preferred color scheme, but there's no ability to force dark mode on Chrome OS at the moment. Um, they are working on OS level solutions on Chrome OS at the moment. Um, unfortunately, I'm not super aware of what's going on with that. Um, I know what's happening there. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to quickly run over sort of the active projects that we have going right now. So these are things that have teams working on them, um, rolling out features uh, in, in the coming releases. So the first is uh, dark mode form controls, uh, then also then the forced colors mode, uh, and then raster side implementation. I'll talk about what the, each of these are in turn uh, rather than on this slide. Okay, so. Um, so form controls, dark mode. So this is basically providing high quality form controls for forced dark mode, as I understand it. So this is a, to address. So basically, the biggest problem is that forms, not all forms, are stylable. Um, so you can't use prefers color scheme for all form controls. And so this is to provide a decent form control, uh, form control uh, appearance during uh, during dark mode. Uh, this is currently targeted for M88 release. The last I heard, um, there are some blocking bugs. And you can go here to see those blocking bugs. Uh, this is work mostly performed, I believe, by Microsoft with some help from the um, from the, the DOM team here at, at, uh, at Google. Um, so right, so if you're interested in this, following along on the outstanding issues on the tracking bug is the best way to, to keep track of what's going on. Uh, so force colors mode is uh, this is a, a spec or a set of related specs. Uh, where the browser will enforce the colors provided by the OS. And so the goal is that, um, that particularly for disability uh, accessibility requirements, 
um, you really want to respect a user's preferences as they've given them to the operating system. So this is particularly important for high contrast for people with uh, vision issues. Um, but there are there are a wide selection of accessibility modes um, in in certainly in Windows and in most OSs and uh, and we would like the browser to respect those settings when displaying content. Uh, and this actually overrides, currently this overrides, um, prefers uh, color mode uh, media queries. Um, right, and then there's related work here. So the high contrast media queries uh, and also force color adjust uh, property to, uh, to opt out of this particular thing. Uh, it's not clear to me why it would be kind to opt out. It seems like you shouldn't, but, uh, but that exists. Uh, the tracking bug for this is listed here, um, and this is targeted for M89 release at the moment, as I understand it. Uh, okay, uh, and so this is an example of the uh, of the high contrast mode shown on the Wikipedia page. Um, so the kind of settings on the left there um, let you define various page styling for particular content on the page and that styling gets applied to the page automatically. Okay. Uh, and then the last, uh, the last project is addressing performance issues with force dark mode. So uh, force dark mode right now, um, the biggest issue is that is handling images. So images for force dark mode, we frequently wish to invert them or we have a a moderately complex scheme for deciding which images should be inverted or filtered. Um, and this requires decoding the image, sending it back to the main thread, and then sending it back to the compositor, uh, to the graphics, to the GPU thread to, to draw the image again. Um, and this is, this is expensive. It's, it uh, requires uh, synchronization across threads, uh, and it's, it's, yeah, it costs a lot of, of time. Uh, so the, the goal... Uh, and it's got some other problems I've listed here, or actually Prashant is listed here. Um, the goal with this this uh, part of the project is to oops, is to move most of the work for uh, dark mode for images onto the raster threads. So basically, Blink will uh, set set appropriate flags saying that the images should be in saying that the content should be in dark mode, and the worker threads uh, in the GPU process will handle the actual application of the filter. This means that um, just architecturally, most images are only decoded when they're actually used. They never leave the, they never leave the GPU thread. Um, and so they never leave the GPU process. And so uh, this allows us to do all of the dark mode image processing uh, in that process without, uh, without interfering with the, the optimized pipeline we already have for images. Um, this, this is in progress. Uh, it's not, I'm not sure what the target is. I think about M90 or M91 for actually getting this uh, fully implemented <clears throat> and out and out the door. There is some some work landing in M89, but um, but most of it is is for further down the pipe. Um, uh, Kushal Sagar is doing most of the uh, implement uh, is is leading at least coordinating the implementation of this right now. Um, and Prashant from uh, Prashant. Nish. Nevis is is working on um, is working on this as well. Um, so that was those, so that's a quick overview of the projects. If you have any questions about these projects, then then uh, ask them here. We can definitely get you answers. Um, as you can see by the list of contacts, there's a lot of people with their uh, fingers in this pie. Um, a lot of people doing different parts of the work, um, and these are the primary contacts. So for the three projects I just mentioned, and then in general. Um, for the uh, for the browser level settings and um, and just sort of general questions that you might have about work coordination and things like that. Um, yeah, so that's actually that's actually all I had. Um, I will leave this slide up. But at this point, um, any uh, we're here to answer any questions you might have about about where we're going and, and what the goals are. Uh, or if any of the um, or if any of the the project leads want to say more about what they're doing, that would also be the, a good time for that. Uh, 
Uh, okay, so the question is, uh, are we changing the image, the logic, or just the point at which it happens? Um, right now, the plan, the primary goal is to change the point at which it happens. So not to change, to keep the, right, so to, to change where it happens, that's the primary goal. Um, we may simplify the image inversion logic. There are currently like four ways of doing it, and we probably don't need four ways of doing it. Um, and there's uh, another way that we're considering um, that in general, the goal is to, to optimize the process rather than to adjust the logic in any significant way. So what is the ch most challenging performance problem that you are facing? So the, the, there are two parts to it. The, the, biggest, the biggest performance issue is this, uh, is copying the image, is getting the image data, is decoding it earlier, getting it over to Blink, setting up, doing the, uh, and then Blink performs the classification of the image. So there's a step where, um, where we run, run of, depending on what the image is, um, like what format, what, uh, what format the image is in and what um, like its color modes are and things. Uh, we do some form of classification on the image and then we decide that determines which filter we need to apply to the image. And then we set that filter and uh, pass the filter over to the pass the filter over to the raster threads, which then decode so, the image again to apply the filter. So I assume those pre-processing steps are not like it doesn't belong to the decoding, so it has to be done before the actual decoding step. Uh, yes, I think if I go back to that slide, uh, maybe uh, uh, I can explain the the part that we're the problems that we're seeing with Blink right now. Uh, okay. If you if you go to go if you go to go to one slide before that, uh, yeah. Uh, right. So the 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 main problem with images is that the the algorithm which decides what filter needs to be applied needs access to decoded pixels of the image because it samples a subset of those pixels and then uses that to decide what exact color filter should be applied when you act, when you raster that image. The details of how ex exactly it uses that pixel data to decide the color filter is a black box to me as well. Um, but the fact that it needs access to those pixels makes it tricky to decide which stage of the rendering pipeline it should happen on. Um, currently, it happens in during paint on the main thread. And as a result of it, you end up having to decode the image on the renderer main thread, which, of course, it's, it's a long process, and it can block that thread for a while. Um, for, for this reason, Chrome right now never decodes images on the main thread. We farm them to a pool of worker threads. So it only makes sense to, to, do, to do this uh, decision of filtering using the a using a sample of pixels at the time that you're decoding it, and, and this happens during raster in the compositor. So this work is mostly about making sure that we do all of our filter classification at the same stage of the pipeline where we're going to decode the image, and since we're going to cache the decoded result of the image anyway, we can cache this filter that we have decided as a byproduct of the decoding slash classification um, operation. Um, and I think the, the, the other problems that are highlighted here are, are sort of a, a byproduct of the, the, the current decoding architecture itself. Uh, for instance, for GIFs and other animated images, we drive those animations from the compositor because Blink Paint doesn't need to be involved in that. So if we start making the filter decisions at paint time, then we're not able to apply them to animated images or GIFs. Um, yeah, thanks. thanks. Uh, Allison, can you address the question about uh, how dark mode interacts with the vision deficiency simulation? Um, so I think the color vision deficiency simulation is a talk that's going to be happening later today. Um, I wasn't involved in that at all, but yeah, I'm actually kind of curious about that myself, so I actually don't know the answer to that one. Hi, I'm Matthias. I worked with uh, Runa, who's also on the call on the color vision deficiency simulation. The talk is happening in 40 minutes in uh, room two, by the way. And um, yeah, spoiler, if you want to attend the talk, maybe cover your ears now, but it's implemented as, um, as an SVG filter on the viewport within Blink. Um, so yeah. 
what what does that mean for how these two things work together? I, I guess it just works. I, I, I guess, guess it's just I guess mean, my question was also uh, I guess my question was mostly if anyone looked at how these two filters interact together and maybe the dark mode filter kind of breaks what the color efficiency filter is trying to to give us, or maybe it introduces um, context co color context issues. Uh, contrast issues, sorry, uh, that could result in color deficiency, in vision deficiency problems? So the color deficiency filter is something that the developer applies in DevTools, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So so, so, yeah. What, so what you would see in DevTools is uh, what, how does uh, um, the high contrast or, or mold or, or the automatic forest darkening look for a person with vision deficiency, I guess. Is that yeah, correct, but... Matthias? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. So I, I think what we're seeing is they're implemented in separate ways, and so they just interact as you would expect. So the, the color vision deficiency filter gets applied to what you would see in the forest dark mode. Yeah, that, I understood that. I, I, I'm gonna try to rephrase my question. Um, I'm, what I'm wondering is, have we ever evaluated whether applying dark mode filter um, hinders the contrast such that you would essentially, by forcing dark mode, create problems for people with color deficiency, color vision deficiency uh, deficiencies, and. If that was the case, maybe maybe we could integrate it into the dark mode filter so to avoid uh, causing such problems. So I, I my understanding of, of that is that there has been no no formal analysis attempting to to analyze the the effect of forced dark mode uh, on a wide range of pages. There are definitely known bugs filed about contrast problems with forced dark mode, particularly related to text over images. Um, this is a there are sort of known issues with this, um, but as far as I know, there is no formal process for, for doing it at the moment. Um, but I totally agree. It is, but I like. But I think it is an important thing to try and to try and get done. Um, yeah. So, so following up offline would be would be a good thing to do uh, because yeah, because we can we can try and get something coordinated here. Can I jump in with some thoughts on the four start mode and image inversion stuff? Sure. Um, so I was actually involved when we rolled this out for WebView under PM for WebView. Hi. Um, and currently, the, the black box that Krishan was referring to is that we sample some pixels um, in images to decide if they are an icon or something similar. And if they are, then we can safely invert them. But sometimes this goes horribly wrong. So imagine a beach scene with a very light sky that often gets inverted because a lot of the pixels are the same color. Um, and I'm wondering if, like, for some of the performance problems you're having, um, maybe we should be looking at a better image inversion logic instead of just trying to make what we have now run better because the inversion logic we have isn't great and it's applied to all images which have a height or width of 100 pixels or less. For starters, we could reduce that because icons are generally smaller. Um, but ideally, I think we should be looking for a better um, inversion approach and that might lead to better performance anyway instead of trying to it improve the performance of what's already there. So I think, uh, so I think you're raising an orthogonal issue to the um, to the to the work to moving things to the raster thread. The the performance of the filter is definitely is definitely important and remains important. Um, but right now, it is very overshadowed by the cost of moving image pixels around across threads. Um, so it is. So definitely important and further down the pipeline for after. So once we've refactored the way that we do it, then that's the best time then to look at further opportunities to improve the, to improve the inversion logic. Um, but yeah, there's scope to do a lot of stuff there. I guess that's true unless you change the logic 
of that evaluation to not include any of the pixel data, like just the size alone, you could do without decoding the image, right? Yeah, so there's, a, there's an opt out. The, there's an opt, there are, there are size, there are size, um, there are various sort of opt outs and heuristics for which things we do and don't include. And it's basically an effort to, <laughs> it's, an, it's an effort, what's, what's the goal? The goal is to invert sprites used for controls, but not invert large images or vice versa, I can't remember. Um, but yes, adjusting the, this comes down to a question. This, this, ultimately, this is coming back to the fundamental issue of forced dark mode is very much a like, best effort. We try to figure out what's going to work across most content most of the time. And, and all of these decisions about which images get converted and which ones don't um, is, is part of that sort of decision as to how we force dark mode upon a page where we have no real information. I think Chirag is also suggesting that if we change the heuristics in a way that results in a lot fewer images needing to get this treatment, then the overall performance impact is decreased. So I guess a follow-up question I would have is, do we, do we have any data on how many images are, any histograms on how many images end up getting processed in this way? Uh, we, have, we have some information that was, we have some histograms that were added by, by PDR, by Philip, um, just, in the last couple of months, I have not looked at what those. Okay. At least I'm pretty sure he added them, but I'm not exactly sure what they cover. Uh, and I can I can answer the question, but not super quickly. And Kushal, I think you're you're you made a point that animated images, it's impossible to do it because that has to happen on the compositor thread for performance reasons, right? Uh, but I didn't realize that this is talking that the only case where we want to do this is icons. I think this gets into again educated guess land that maybe icons are right, likely not going to be animated images. So if we skip those, then it's, that's okay. Yeah, I'm imagining that if something is animated, you probably don't want to be evaluating it for inversion. You just want to leave it as is. Yep. In, in terms of uh, reducing the size, I think, again, this is the, this is going to become a, a, into that best effort land where whatever size of the image we pick to analyze, um, it, 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 it's definitely going to be true that if we have to record uh, the image during pain time, then we have to be a lot more conservative about which images we analyze than if we can get access to decoded pixels at raster time directly. Actually, I had a question about images. Is there is there an easy way in the platform to specify alternate source uh, resources for an image only when in dark mode? Is there a picture element or source set feature for this? Or do you have to do CSS that display nuns one element and display something else? It's replacement based on the media query. Does anybody know? Or was that for the preferred color scheme styling, you mean? Seem like, suppose you want to swap out your, your icons to have different icon resources in dark mode as a site author. You can do that easily with CSS images using style sheets and media queries. But what about, what about image elements and picture elements? Yeah, content images. Uh, yeah, content images. I think you have to display none and swap them out. I think actually you can use picture with source, and on the source tag you can add uh, the media attribute, which takes a media query, and so you can do it from within HTML without adding another layer of CSS. Okay, I actually have let me post a demo page of that in chat that we've been using to test stuff in DevTools. Are you are you talking about content for images, like things that make up the body of the text? Uh, so we're, we're talking about images, images that are image like that are what you think of as an image on the page, as opposed to an image that is used 
uh, as part of CSS styling, so background images mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. um, the most common being background images. Uh, and so what we found with those is that, um, sorry, one second, too many meetings happening here. Are we right? Back? I, I think uh, I'm actually confused about the, the case where I, I assume that this dark mode filtering for images is only required when we're trying to force it and the author doesn't have a way to to specify which image they want if we are in dark mode versus not. Is that not the case? Yeah, I mean, we are talking about cases where sites are not automatic, have not designed their own dark mode. But I was also just riffing on that question about the picture element, because I thought maybe there was a hole in the APIs. But um, Matthias showed how you can, you can do it with the picture element already. When we looked at pictures uh, for, for pages that we were making forcibly dark, we found that images that make up content of the page were fine as they were. Like maybe we'd want to do something like drop the brightness of them, but we wouldn't want to meaningfully change those pictures. Um, so I imagine we'd just leave them as they are. But I guess to Chris's point, that this is this is what's interesting to me is I don't see a lot of big sites adopting dark mode in a meaningful way, and I think the the gap we might need to find is like, how can we give them a way where we say, okay, maybe the browser applies a force dark, but you can then just selectively change things that didn't happen properly, instead of saying to them, hey, you have to rewrite all the CSS for your whole page. And we, um, maybe there's like a hybrid model that makes adoption of this easier for sites. What do you guys think about that? Uh, so there is, there is a future work item that uh, the Prashant listed in his original slides for doing um, for doing prefers color scheme on an element wise level, which I think would address what you're what you're saying there. That for elements that are really important for a page, they can uh, and an author would be able to say this set of elements gets dark mode while leaving the rest to while leaving the rest to us. And that would and right and the and the intended the intended application is that we are forced dark we are forced dark moding anything that does not have its own preferred color scheme on the element. Uh, yeah, I remember that we discussed at one point that, uh, so you have the color scheme property that applies to every element, which could be different, dark or light. And we talked about uh, responding to that per element when you have force darkening, so you only force darkening for the, for the case where you don't support the dark color scheme. And that's available already, or is something that's coming well, later? Well, that's not something we have done anything about, as far as I know. OK. But you can, Thank you. You can polyfill it with uh, clever style sheets that enumerate everything. Right, Rene? Sorry, you can. Developers with sufficient effort can, I think, make dark only apply to some elements on the page. It's just annoying to do so. Right. Uh, you mean force darkening? Uh, yeah, or or just dark in general. Say if some of their pages doesn't really support dark mode, they can. Mm, I I don't think that's I don't think that's implemented. I only think we do it at, at the page level, but um, but I'm not sure because I haven't looked at the force darkening code for that. Okay. That's something we talked about, but I don't think we have done anything about it. Oh, Stephen, you're muted. Uh, sorry. Yes. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I think we've so I think we've hit our time limit, as I understand it. Um, any further questions? By all means, reach out to me. I can redirect. Um, or, or directly to any of the people mentioned on that contact slide. Uh, I will figure out how to share the slides. Um, I will figure out how to share the slides so you can see all the all the links. Um, thanks, everyone. Um, uh, sorry that. Thank you for stepping in on such such short notice. Too. Yeah, I hope that I worked out okay for everybody. Um, and like I said, thanks very much for attending. I appreciate it. Yeah. Bye, folks. <laughs>